thrilled to be a part of the Generous Family and the Generous Kids Book Club because like you, reading to my kids was my favorite thing. I found such a way of bonding with them and entertaining them, giving them life lessons that we could read together and talk about together. So I'm a huge fan of books. And you probably know I've, I've written a few children's books myself. But what I love about the Generous Family and the Generous Kids Book Club is that these are all value-based books. The characters are so cute. Like this little guy, he's Jasper G. the giraffe. Oh. There's Ellie the elephant and Polly the parrot. So the characters are so, so much fun to follow along with. And then each lesson that you get or each book that you get teaches a lesson. And those lessons are, are things like giving and generosity and compassion and empathy and and positivity and joyfulness. So that's why I'm just, I'm so excited to, to be a part of it because I love these books. I love the mission behind them. And it's even more than a book club because they come with all kinds of goodies each month, like stickers and collector's cards. And you can go online and you can see some animation with these characters. And it's, it's a fantastic club. Did you write any of the books that are included in the subscription? I did not write any of the books. It actually, every book is under the pen name, Betta to Give, which oh. is really adorable <laughs> because that's like the big picture goal is that we wanna teach our kids, it's always better to give than to receive. So the books are actually written by, by multiple people. They are parents, they're educators, and they're experts uh, that have come together and collectively written all of these books. So as a parent, how did you instill in your children good values, you know, biblical values that mm -hmm. stain them as, as they've grown up? Yeah, well, you, you said it yourself. I trained my kids up with biblical values and the Bible is where we started and where we continue to read today. And, you know, even when, when my kids were young, like I had the fruit of the spirit uh, lettered on their walls to remind them of, of all of the fruit of the spirit, joy, love, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. Um, and we just, we talk about those things. And so like the Bible tells us that train up a child in the way they should go. And when they are not old, they, they won't depart from it. And so I believe in that intentional parenting and we taught out of the Bible and and I'm grateful to see that I have adult children today who are all following that road and that path, loving the Lord. So why should parents participate in this book club? There are so many options out there. What yeah. really sets this one apart, especially for parents who are really concerned about their children's spiritual formation, which a lot of times comes through what they read, what they absorb. Yeah, exactly. Well, I... I think that that you that you know, and I hope my my audience knows that that they can trust what I get behind. I've been a faithful follower of Jesus Christ my whole my whole life, well, since I was twelve. And I don't just put my name behind anything or put my name on anything. It's something that I truly love and believe in and the good work that it does. So again, this book club has so many extras to it. Um, and I think that is part of what sets it apart from any uh, any other book club. But in addition to that, these are values that matter. That's what we're teaching. And whether you're a person of faith or not, I think you're going to really appreciate these books. Um, there actually is not scripture right out in the books, but they're teaching all biblical principles. And that's what we, what we love because maybe you come from a different faith background. Um, and, or maybe you're just don't teach any kind of faith at home, but you want your, your kids to know good values. And so that's what these books are all about. But, you know, if you are a Christian and you know, the Bible, you know, exactly where the source is from. What advice do you have for parents to raise children, to know and love the Lord, Lord in a culture that often doesn't, doesn't support us, right? That's a very counterculture. Yeah. 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 I know it can be it can be challenging. We're definitely in a time of a culture war. And I think the best thing that any of us can do as parents is to be consistent and that we actually walk our walk and we show it by example and not just talk the talk. 
And it, you know, it's, it's a lot easier said than done because those little eyes are always watching you. Like you, your, you know, mommy and daddy are the b biggest examples in life. So they're always watching to see what you're going to do. And I think if you as a parent can walk with the consistency and back up your words with your actions, that speaks volumes and your children will know that it doesn't go unnoticed by them ever. And that consistency through life will, will, will play out. I truly believe that. So how can parents get involved in Generous Kids Book Club? It's super easy. You just go to generouskidsbookclub.com. That's it. And there's a couple different options for you. You can, you can subscribe to that monthly subscription. You can go month by month. You can cancel it anytime. You can buy a year subscription. You can gift it. These are also really great for grandparents. I would encourage you. If you do have little grandchildren at home, it'd be great for them. And um, I, I'm, yeah, I'm going to stop there. I was going to say some stuff and I'm like, Ugh. oh, tell I'm, not, I'm, not a, I'm not a grandparent yet, but I can't wait to become a grandparent one day. Oh, and, I love that. So, yeah, but I have little nieces and nephews that are still young. So, you know what they're getting for Christmas this year. Absolutely. Well, kids love books. There's really no better gift you can give them. I know. I know. Exactly. Well, Candace, Christmas is your season. You're so festive. Mm -hmm. And I'm so excited because you are in some upcoming great American pure flicks movies. What yeah. can you tell us about these roles that you're playing? Yeah, I'm, I'm so happy. I love my Christmas movie this year. It's called my Christmas hero. And it is, I play an army reserve doctor, Nicole Ramsey, and she, she goes on a little journey to honor a fallen soldier with the help of some other military heroes to, to bring healing to her own family. So it's a touching story. There's, of course, a little bit of romance. We always have that in our Christmas movies. But the focus here is really to honor our military, those who have served and are currently serving. And that was really important to me. That's really um, such an important key to our network, Great American Family Channel and Great American Pure Flicks, where we honor faith family and country. And so I hope everyone enjoys this Christmas movie this year. And Thanksgiving weekend is a really big one. Uh, Danica McKellar's is on the Saturday night. Mine's on the Friday night. And then there's another movie called A Christmas for the Ages that I produced. That is a wonderful generational story starring Cheryl Ladd and my daughter, Natasha Bure, um, that goes from, you know, 20 year old daughter, her mom, grandma and great grandma. And they they share how they all celebrated Christmas throughout the decades. And so it's very visually fun. We go back to the 40s, back to the 60s, the 90s and then present day. So we're, we have a great, great weekend lined up for on Great American Family that I hope everyone catches. In a culture of commercialism, how do you in, keep Christ in Christmas, help your family remember what Christmas is all about? You know, I, it's, I feel like it gets easier and easier, at least as I get older. And I'm the first one who will tell you, I love the commercialism of the holidays. I love the decorations. I love the Christmas smells and the music and um, the Christmas tree and, and the, the baking and the goods, like all of that. I absolutely love it. But the reason I love Christmas so much is because it's the easiest time to share the gospel with people. That's what our season's all about. That, um, that a savior came for all mankind to be reconciled to God. And so it's the season of the year that, that truly it's, it's rare if someone gets offended when you do share the gospel, because that's why we're celebrating Christmas. And so I'm, I'm, I'm always reminded of that. It's always at the forefront of my mind, but knowing that true meaning and knowing that that's what the purpose of the season is also allows me to then celebrate the festivities of the season with a clear conscience. And so I love to be able to do, to do both of those. And it's important for my family that we, we have always talked about the real season reason for the season and reading the Bible and throughout the year, not just on Christmas morning, but that's something that we focus on on Christmas morning. 
just to be present and give gratitude and thankfulness towards God. And, and then we, you know, can just enjoy family and friends and all the other wonderful traditions that come along with Christmas time. Absolutely. So what are some favorite family traditions you have? Christmas family. Oh, traditions. Yeah. So ours have kind of changed over the years because my kids are all adults now. And uh, this year is going to be a little different for us because we have kind of recently moved um, to a different a different uh, place in California. So I'm not around all my family. We usually go over to my brother's house and my parents are there and, and my sisters and we do all the caroling and, and eat together and just talk and love on each other. But uh, I'm not quite sure what our, what our new traditions are gonna be this year. Um, we, the last few years, we actually would wake up before the sun rises so we could go out to a cliff top and watch the sunrise, which has been really beautiful. So I think we're going to try to pick a spot where we're at and watch the sunrise and, uh, and then we'll see how it goes. But yeah, there's just new traditions starting in our house and this is the first year. So I'm going to have to, I can answer that question better next year. Okay. I'm going to ask you again next year. Okay. <laughs> Okay. It is yours such an encouragement to so many people, especially women, young women. What encouragement do you have for people who may be struggling this holiday season? It's been a hard year for a lot of people. I know. I know. It's been it's been a very hard year. And uh so many of us have felt the effects of it in all different ways, but I'm I'm right there with you. And um I think the encouragement I would have is one, to be in a place of gratitude for what you do have, just to look around. And sometimes it feels like that could be trivial, but it's not, it really isn't. And sometimes to realize, you know, I have my child, I have my husband, or I have my mom, those people in your life that are, your, that are your constants that are there for you. Um, I think that that is a thing that just, can can bring joy from the inner place of the heart to remember gratitude. And I also think that simplicity is the best. You know, um, the, the holidays can be difficult also because of missing loved ones. And I think when we, we settle in a place to just remember the beauty that is right around, right around us, surrounding us, in front of us, it can help through those times, you know? but you're not alone. I think that's the biggest message. There's many, many people that can feel that way during the holidays, but you're, you're never alone. And you're, you're just like an Instagram message away. Maybe someone's not right in front of you, but like, I think there's, there's so many virtual people that are available to bring smiles to faces. 